Hey y'all, Coach of the Fight here, and an update on our celestial calendar. Now, we're looking at a verse from chapter 11 of the Third Testament of the Bible, which we'll be talking about in an upcoming video. If you would, go ahead and read through these two verses and leave a comment that we can talk about in an upcoming video about them. But in this video, like we said, we're going to be talking about the calendar. So we're going to be looking in the book of Enoch, as well as the book of Jubilees at the seasonal days, the days of remembrance, those four additional days that are unique to the sacred calendar. We'll be comparing it to the Jewish calendar. So we're going to be looking particularly close at some of these verses, like, for instance, over here in the book of Jubilees, chapter six. Starting there at about verse 22. Let me go ahead and read that one. It says, For I have written in the book of the first law, in that which I have written for thee, that thou shouldest celebrate it in its season, one day in the year. And I have explained to thee his sacrifices that the children of Israel should remember and should celebrate it throughout their generations in this month, one day in every year. So that right there, is actually talking about the Feast of Weeks. You see there in verse 21. So let me read verse 23, which says, And on the new moon of the first month, and on the new moon of the fourth month, and on the new moon of the seventh month, and on the new moon of the tenth month, are the days of remembrance. And the days of the seasons in their four divisions of the year, these are written and ordained as a testimony forever. So this is what we're talking about here. We're talking about months there, and we're talking about the days of remembrance and the days of the seasons. So seasonal days, days of remembrance, are these four days that are key to the sacred calendar, unique to the sacred calendar. These days are not on the Jewish calendar. You see how it says in verse 24, Noah ordained them for himself as a feast for the generations for forever. So this would be the feast of the new moons. You guys can let me know what you think in the comment section, but I believe this is what David was doing with King Saul back there in 1 Samuel chapter 20. You can pause the video like you did before, read through here and just make a comment if you believe that this is what was going on or was David and King Saul having a monthly celebration. I'm starting to believe that this is what they were doing because you see that this feast was ordained as a memorial for forever. You see in 29 that they're placed on the heavenly tablets. So this is what we're going to get into in this video. You see where it's talking about how it says each had 13 weeks, one to another, past their memorial from the first to the second and from the second to the third and from the third to the fourth. And then look particularly close at verse 30, which says, and all the days of the commandment will be two and 50 weeks of days and these will make the entire year complete thus it is engraven and ordained on the heavenly tablets so now that's important as far as calendars go because these days of remembrance like we said at the beginning of the video are unique to the sacred calendar you see in verse 31 it says there's no neglecting them we can't stop doing these we can't you know say this calendar is antiquated and we don't need to use it Verse 32 starts talking about these 364 days, which like we said, are unique to the sacred calendar. These four days, particularly of what we're talking about in this video, which may turn into a series. But notice right there where it says, and they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feasts, for everything will fall out in them according to their testimony and they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feast. This can be the part of the video when we talk about the 13th month. Like you see coming up in the year 2023, 
Now, the Jewish calendar always adds that 13th month, Adar 2, and always falls at the end of the year. Well, when you remember the seasonal days, you find that the 13th month of that particular cycle falls in the summertime because the new moon will be sighted before September the 18th. It will be counted as Elul 2 or second Elul. And you say, well, what makes that a big deal? Well, we'll cover that in a future video, Father willing, because that's concerning the feast days of tabernacles in the year 2023. How about those who follow the Jewish calendar will celebrate their day of atonement a month too early. So that's what it's talking about is feasts. The feast will be off for a month that year. This is the difference between the Jewish calendar and the sacred calendar or the Enoch calendar. It says here, when you remember these seasonal days, everything will fall out and we won't leave out any day and we won't disturb any feast. Let me give you guys a link to this playlist that includes a video on how the Jewish calendar misses one of the feast days for most years. Some years they get it right, but it's like one in seven or something like that. But check out that video. The reason why the Jewish calendar gets the feast days wrong so often is simple. The Jewish calendar does not remember the seasonal days, but uses the 19 year metonic cycle to determine which years have 13 months. Well, this is why it's called the Jewish calendar and not the sacred calendar or the Enoch calendar because it uses a non-scriptural method of determining the months and the seasons. The days of remembrance or the seasonal days are absolutely necessary for the reckoning of the celestial sacred calendar or the Enoch calendar. So then you start to see what happens when we don't do this. And again, pause the video. Or if you want, I can paste the text down in the comment section. All right, now let's jump over to the book of First Enoch and see what it has to say about these days of remembrance or these seasonal days. We'll start down in about chapter 81, which is part of the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven. Verse six says, respecting these men greatly err and do not calculate them in the calculation of every age for they greatly err respecting them. In other words, we're in error for not including these four days on the calendar. It changes the location of the 13th month and the feast days. But it says here that we greatly err because we do not calculate them in the calculation of every age. And then it says, nor do men know accurately that these are in the calculation of the year. But notice it says, but indeed these are marked down forever. Notice that it says forever here, but the thing about it, this book of first Enoch, was written way before the book of Jubilees. The book of Jubilees was written by Moses. This book here was written by Enoch. Enoch was Noah's great granddaddy. So this is why Noah was remembering these days for forever is because they were already on the heavenly tablets. They were already written down. But notice this part right here where it says one in the first gate, one in the third, one in the fourth, and one in the sixth so that the year is completed in 364 days. So we compare these, you have these days of remembrance or these seasonal days. It says here, the first, the third, the fourth, and the sixth gate. Well, we saw back over here in the book of Jubilees that this occurs on the new moon of the first month, the fourth month, the seventh month, and the 10th month. So picking on the year 2023, you have the new moon on or about March the 22nd falls after the spring equinox. So it would be the day of remembrance, the first day of spring. Of course, we have to wait on the verification of the new moon to be sure. That's extremely important. 
But if the new moon is sighted on March the 22nd, then the first month in the year 5995 will start on Wednesday evening. And our calendars would look like this with the Passover meal occurring on the evening of April the 4th. Now it's important to get that right, but we'll do more videos on it, especially after we get the sighting of the new moon. And then the rest of the season would look like this. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So let's go back over to the book of Jubilees, chapter six, and look closer at verses 29 and 30, as it's talking about these seasons and how each of them has 13 weeks and the entire year, 13 times four, is 52 weeks of days long. This needs a little more study because you probably know already that each lunation is only 29.5 days long. And if you have three of these lunations in a season, that adds up to 88.5 days, which is 2.5 days shorter than 13 weeks. So what was Moses talking about? He definitely wasn't talking about months. So how does these 13 weeks add up per season? Well, for that, we have to come back to the first chapter of the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven, which can be found in chapter 71 of the book of first Enoch, where Enoch starts talking about these gates or these portals. And it's really important to understand that a gate or a portal described in Enoch is not a month. They're not the same thing. The gates are regulated by the position of the stars, whereas the months are regulated by the moon, like the day is regulated by the sun. So let's see how all of this works. First thing we have to do is split our year up into four sections or the four seasons. And then from there, we can split each season up into three gates. There are 12 gates total, spaced 30 days apart. So with the spring equinox being sometime around mid-March, the first new moon after that date would be the day of remembrance for the spring season and the first day of the first month. Then when we have another new moon that falls in the next gate, it would start the next month. And for the year 2023, we'll have three new moons in the spring season but it gets real interested in the, the summertime because we'll actually have four new moons. We'll have one in the beginning of June, one really close to the beginning of July. But before the fall equinox, there will be two more new moons. The reason being is that the gates are 30 days long, whereas the lunations are only 29.5 days long. So that's where your 13th month comes from in the year 2023. The 13th month is not always at the end of the year. It can be found in any one of these seasons. All you need is for an additional new moon to fall within that season. Like for instance, in the year 2023, when the summertime will have four new moons. This is why it's important to keep up with the days of remembrance. This is what it's talking about when it tells us that our seasons and our feast days will stay aligned. We won't lose any days or weeks or months or anything when we pay attention to the days of remembrance. If we don't remember the seasonal days will be like the people following the Jewish calendar in the year 2023 celebrating the fall feast days an entire month too early. I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, or if you have any questions or anything, just let me know in the comment section. We'll do more videos on this as we try to get a fundamental understanding of how the sacred calendar works. And we'll talk more about it in the next part of this series. Let me know what you think so far in the comment section. And don't forget about what we talked about earlier from the Third Testament of the Bible. Moses and these so-called secondary laws for human life. 
What are they? Where are they? Let's talk about it in the comments section. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. Shalom.